I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on rational functions. We'll discuss how to sketch graph of the function minus 3x plus 12 divided by x square minus 3x minus 4 in this particular video. Now, whenever you're given a rational function, first thing is to factor, right? So, so let's factor this. We can factor minus 3 and what we get in the numerator is x minus 4 and the denominator it is a quadratic function product of minus 4 sum of minus 3 4 times 1 can work so we have x minus 4 times x plus 1 correct so we have factored it so that is your first step so first step will be factor now once you factor it is very easy to see where are the vertical asymptotes and uh, what are the other restrictions so immediately from here we can write down the restrictions restrictions clearly denominator cannot be zero so we have x which is not equal to four and also not minus one so there are two restrictions to this rational function now what do these restrictions lead to well, you can see that x minus 4 is a common factor and it cancels. Since x minus 4 cancels, clearly we have a hole here. So we can say we have a hole at x equals to 4. Since we have a factor in the numerator and denominator which cancels. So once it cancels, we can write this as f of x is equal to minus 3 over x plus 1. Now it is important to find the value of the whole itself. So at 4, what is the value of the function? So it is minus 3 over 4 plus 1, which is minus 3 over 5. So that is the position of the whole. So we have whole at x equals to 4 when y is equal to minus 3 over 5. Clear? So we got one restriction, which is the whole. Here, it is a good practice to always write that x is not equal to 4 or minus 1, correct? Okay. Now, the other restriction was x equals to minus 1 leads to a vertical asymptote. So we get vertical asymptote. Add x equals to minus 1, right? So that is the denominator, which will make the denominator 0, right? Now, once you have whole and the vertical asymptote, we can now go for horizontal asymptote. Since we have minus 3 over x plus 1, denominator of denominator is very high, when x is very high, it leads to 0. So, horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0. Correct? So, we have the basic structure for the rational function. Now, I'll sketch this here. We have a vertical asymptote, which is at x equals to minus 1. So, let me draw this here. Right? We have a horizontal asymptote, which is y equals to 0 and we also know that there is a hole at x equals to 4 y equals to minus 3 over 5 right so let's say this point here represents the hole correct okay? whose position here is x is 4 and y is minus 3 over 5 clear okay? so that becomes the uh, framework uh, around which we are now going to work. The other critical points are very easy to take out. One is the x and y intercepts. Now, in this particular case, the numerator is minus 3, right? So, we have no x-intercept. However, we have a y-intercept. y-intercept is the value of the function when x is 0. When you substitute 0, we get minus 3. So, the y-intercept is at minus 3, right? So this value, minus 3, becomes the y-intercept, right? 
So, connecting these points, we know the graph should be kind of like this. Now, on this side, we are not very sure how will it look like. Well, we know this is your vertical asymptote at x equals to minus 1. So, we can take a value at x equals to minus 2 and see what is going to be the value of the function. So, let's calculate the value of the function at minus 2. We'll use the simplified equation, which is minus 3 over minus 2 plus 1. And that gives you minus 3 over minus 1 or it is equal to 3. So at x equals to minus 2 we get a positive value and the positive value is plus 3. Okay. So that means that clearly this part of the graph should be like this. Well this point here is minus 2 plus 3. Is that clear, right? So that is how we actually get the sketch of our function. And now we can actually describe the characteristics. Let's begin with the end behavior, which says when x approaches negative infinity, we know y approaches zero. But does it approach from top or from bottom? Well, we can substitute a large negative value in this. So when I substitute a large negative value, I get a positive value. So it means from above, right? And when x approaches positive infinity, y approaches 0. When I substitute a positive large value, I get a negative value. So it is from below. Do you see that? So clear. Now, behavior near the vertical asymptote. When x approaches, vertical asymptote is at x equals to minus 1. So when x approaches minus 1, from the right side, we write like plus. In that case, y approaches what? So I can actually write a value minus 0.9, for example, in the given expression. And what we get here, when we write minus 0.9, numerator is negative, but denominator is positive. So we get a negative infinity. And when x approaches minus 1 from the left side, we see that the y value approaches positive infinity. So that is the behavior near the vertical asymptote, right? So I hope that is absolutely clear. Now, once you have defined all these behaviors, then we have more or less described all the characteristics. We can now say that the function f of x is actually greater than 0 in the interval from minus infinity to minus 1. And f of x is less than 0 or it is negative in the interval from, so this is, there is a split here, do you see that? So this point is not in the domain. So when you're describing this, you have to say from minus 1 to 4 union, from 4 to infinity. Do you see that? That's kind of important. Now, let's talk about slope. Now, slope is the tangent on the curve. It is rising, you see. So, slope is positive or increasing. For x belongs to real numbers, where x is not equal to minus 1 and 4. You could write like this also. Now, slope could be also, what about the rate of change of slope, right? So, rate of slope. Now, let's talk about rate of slope. Now, this portion is concave up, so it is positive. So, it is positive or increasing, positive or increasing. Increasing is better word, not straight positive. Increasing in the interval from minus infinity to minus 1. This is concave down, right? So it is decreasing from minus 1 to 4, right? And then from 4 to infinity, since it is concave down. So using the property of concave up and concave down, you can easily comment 
on the rate of change of slope. Is that clear to you, right? You can also say the graph of the function is concave up in this position from minus infinity to minus 1. Let me write down concave up. And in this portion, it is concave down. That explains the rate of change of slope. So whenever it is concave down, the rate of change of slope is decreasing, right? And when it is concave up, the rate of change of slope is increasing. So I hope with this, you understand how to completely describe a rational function and sketch its graph. Hope it makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.